Hi, welcome to another Wednesday's Word. My name's Tim. I'm here to help us understand the Bible in context with the overarching storyline. I pastor a church in Marysville, Washington called Cascade Christian Reformed Church. And this is mostly for them, but anyone else is welcome to send me questions or help us explore our faith together. And this week was been reading through the Bible. One of the things that really hit me was our need for grace our grace in relationships, our grace when it comes to questions of legalism and such. We live very short lives. We read Psalm 70 this past week where Moses was telling us to number our days that we could gain a heart of wisdom. We get maybe 80 years if we're strong and all of life is labor and toil. And out of those days, what can we accomplish? And mostly what we want to accomplish is to love the Lord. But also we want to love others. The greatest commandment was to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. But then we love our neighbor as ourselves. And sometimes I feel like many people in the church, we go through the world trying to accommodate and accomplish things so that we would have points in heaven. I remember in college having friends who were talking about people whose heaven had crowns in heaven that were so heavy they'd have to wear a neck brace to keep their heads upright. And maybe there is some rewards in heaven. The Bible talks to that. But mostly, I think, heaven's going to be a place where we're there by grace and we're celebrating how much grace Jesus has for us. Think about the thief on the cross. I was just reading that part of the story this morning. Jesus was crucified between two criminals, and initially they both mocked him. And then one of them realized that, that he's about to die. And he deserved his death. But Jesus did nothing, so he strikes down, it doesn't strike down, but he tries to silence the other thief who's continuing to mock Jesus and says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus turned to him and said, today, you're going to be with me in paradise. Alistair Begg imagines that guy in heaven and says, imagines people coming up to him and asking him, you know, why are you here? Was it because you didn't drink? Was it because you went to church all the time? How much of the Bible did you memorize? You know, all the stuff that we think gets us into heaven our, our purity, our good marriages, our church attendance, our serving as elders, deacons, Sunday school teachers, little lambs instructors, all the stuff we do for God. And the guy just shrugs and says, well, the guy in the middle cross said I could be here. That's, that's my only answer. And that's our answer also. The only reason any of us will be in heaven is because the guy on the middle cross said we could be here, Jesus. He said that he would give us grace. He said he would give us new birth. He said he would bring us into his very presence and God would be our God and we would be God's people. That's our answer. And so as we go through life, we remember that that could be any minute. None of us knows how old we are. I remember people joking about having a midlife crisis. And the truth is you can have a midlife crisis at 14 because you don't know if you're gonna live until you're 28. Or your midlife could be at 60 because you could live to 120. None of us knows how many days we have. And so we have to keep that grace in front of us. Grace, living every day humbly before God, just receiving his grace, but also grace toward others, realizing that your I love you might be the last one. I listened to a sermon from a different church this week, just called Memento Memore, meaning remember that you will die. There was a practice that the Romans and early church fathers used to do where a lot of the scholars, and maybe you've seen artwork like this, they would be writing and they'd be at their desks, people like Augustine, Ignatius, the early church fathers, and they would have a skull on their desk. Those skulls were skulls from other people who had died in their community. And they would keep those skulls. It wasn't just random skull I got on Etsy. It was, this is Father Dominican, and this is his skull. And it's on my desk to remind me that this is my fate also. Every day is grace. Every day is a gift. And so I need to prepare myself to die and live every day as if that that could happen which means rely on God's grace with humility. In the book of James, it says, don't say you're going to go to this town or that town and make a lot of money. Say, if the Lord wills, I'll do these things. But also we have to rely on God's grace with the people around us. Instead of facing each other with this Christian legalism, we soften our hearts. When people sin against us, we step back into that relationship. When Jesus said to turn the other cheek, he wasn't meaning let them keep hitting you. What he meant was, you were supposed to kiss this cheek and you slapped it. I'm going to give you this cheek now. Could you, could you maybe give that cheek, cheek a kiss? I'm going to keep myself open to that relationship. It can be hard and, and soul-crushing, and, and I've had my heart ripped out from people. But it's worth it. Because you never know if your I love you or I forgive you will be the last one you have. 
before you're up in heaven, realizing the fullness of God's grace. And so this week, as you're reading the Bible, especially as we're still celebrating Easter and remembering that, remember that that thief on the cross deserved his death, didn't deserve his eternity, but it was a free gift. And he only had a minute to make his life right. Only had a minute. All the rest of his life could have been wasted. But in that moment, he accepted Christ and that changed his eternity. Which means don't let a minute go by until you receive Jesus if you haven't. But also don't let a minute go by where you fester on unhealed wounds and settle for legalism. Instead, keep an open and soft heart toward the people around you. Realize that God called us to be a part of the story of a father who loves his children, a husband who loves his wife, and who will always love them. All right, if you have any questions, feel free to send them to me. If not, I'll talk to you next week. God bless.